I'm John Buchanan, and in this video we're going to look at an absolute stone-cold classic production technique, which is referred to as the New York Compression Technique. Before we get into the details of it, let's have a listen to the track we'll be working on. Okay, so just eight bars. Now, a lot of people are constantly looking for more power and punch in their mixes. And the New York compression technique is one technique which allows you to definitely build a bit more of that into your tracks and in particular into your beats. And what we're gonna do is to explore exactly what this particular trick is. Now to do that, what I'm going to do is to solo the drum track, we'll just have a listen to it by itself. I can see that it's a drum machine designer part that I've programmed and it sounds like this by itself. Okay, perfectly solid beat, but nevertheless, I want more power from it. Now, as we know, what we can do with Logic's compressor, and I'm just going to open up the compressor that's already on this track, is that down here in the bottom right-hand corner, we can create what are called parallel treatments actually directly within the compressor. I'm in a position to decide whether or not I want to monitor just the input signal, the signal coming into the compressor, or a balance between it and the output signal. So if I want to, I can create what's called a parallel treatment here, where I'm balancing the original signal with the compressed treatment. But for the New York compression technique, what I'm actually going to do is not worry about the little gentle compressor that's working on the sound already, but instead what I'm going to do is to set up a new auxiliary bus. Now, exactly why I'm going to achieve this technique with a brand new auxiliary will become clear. I'll come back to that in just a moment. But to achieve it, what I'm gonna do is to drop down here to the Drum Machine Designer track, and I'm going to go looking for the first available bus, which I can see is bus five. It doesn't matter which bus you use. So I'm gonna set up bus five, and what Logic's now done is to basically change the way that the inspector is working, giving me the original track here, and then this auxiliary track next to it. So what I'm gonna do is to turn up the send from this channel into this bus. Now when you do this, um, if we listen to the audio at the same time, what's actually gonna happen is that the volume is going to lift because effectively what's happening is that we're taking this signal, which is being routed to the stereo output track, and we're also sending it across to this auxiliary, which is also being sent to the output track. So as a result, when you first start boosting volume, you'll find that the level will go up. But we don't want to just double the volume or find another way to send it through to the output channel. What we want to do is to provide this compression technique, which is going to add reinforcement and weight. So what I'm going to do is to set up a new compressor from the dynamics folder over here on this auxiliary bus. And this is now creating a parallel compression treatment for me. It's running in parallel to the original track. Now, for the um, New York compression technique, what we want is a compressor which is gonna respond really quickly. And for that, actually what I'm going to do is to use this Studio FET model. Now, what we want is loads of additional power. And the advantage of having this signal on its own auxiliary bus is that anything I change here isn't going to affect the original signal at all. That's over there on its own track. And now obviously my compression treatment is also on its own track, meaning I can hit this signal really hard and I'm still only blending it with the original drum part underneath it. So what I'm going to do is to drop the threshold significantly so that a lot of the signal is going to be um, compressed. What I'm then going to do is to increase the ratio significantly as well. I really want any signal that's going to be compressed to be hit really hard. Now, I want to be in control of the amount of output volume, so I'm going to turn off automatic gain compensation. But because I'm compressing the signal hard and because I'm using a high ratio, I'm definitely going to need some makeup gain because the signal is going to be a lot quieter without some additional boost. And then what I want to do is to make sure my attack time is quite fast so that the transients are hit quite quickly. And then I also want to be responsible for the release time, which is gonna be a little bit slower. And this is something we'll come back to and tweak as we're actually listening through the effect. Now, the effect of these settings is that I've now got a really sort of quite spanked hard signal. And so what we can do is actually solo just this auxiliary bus by itself. I can solo the bus, which means that we're not gonna hear the original track at all. We're only going to hear the compressed treatment. And it sounds like this, and I'll probably tweak some settings as we listen back.
Now this attack time is really crucial. You can hear that if I make this very short, we're gonna catch the beginning of every single transient. Whereas if I let through some of that transient, we get kind of more of the original kick drum and snare and hat uh, without it hitting the compressor. Now remember, this is a parallel treatment and I want it to be quite spanked. So what I'm gonna do is to make sure that I am setting a really fast attack time here so that I'm catching those initial transients. And as far as output volume is concerned, well, we've got a couple of ways of being able to control that. I'm just gonna put this at um, 8 dB of additional gain. Now then, what is the effect of this in the context of the mix? I'm actually just going to label this. I'm going to call it NYC Comp. What's the effect of it in the mix and why have I used an auxiliary track rather than simply configuring this in channel? Well, the huge advantage of having done this on its own auxiliary is that I've now got a volume control which is going to allow me to decide how much of this channel I want to hear. What I can do, of course, is to drop this down to zero and effectively I've got my original track without any New York compression. And what I can also do is to dial in the amount, finding the kind of sweet spot of how much I want to bring this signal in underneath the original. So let's do that next. Let's just hear the effect of what this additional compressor is doing in terms of punch and power within the mix. I'm gonna mute it, I'll have a listen through, and at four bars after four bars, I'm gonna punch it in. So we get all of this extra weight. Now then, the one thing that separates the New York compression technique from regular parallel drum treatments is that what we can also do is to enhance this treatment with a little bit of additional EQ. I'm gonna fire up the channel EQ, and what I'm going to do is to use the shelves at either end of this EQ to slightly lift the bottom end from about sort of 100 hertz downwards and lift the top end from about 8K upwards. Now, again, I'm not adding tons of volume here. This is what we refer to as a smile EQ because effectively the shape of it looks like a smile, a boost at the bottom and a boost at the top and nothing added in the middle. And what this is gonna do is just to give the whole of this parallel compression treatment just a little bit more power at both ends of the mix, a little bit more weight and a little bit more fizz as well. So our, the next thing to do is to then work out how much of this level we want. Again, because it's on its own channel and because it's got its own fader, I can decide how much of this to bring into the mix. So this time, rather than just muting it in and out, what I'm gonna do instead is simply uh, introduce the volume until I find a level for it that I'm happy with. So what we've done within this video is that we've studied and learned about an absolutely classic production technique if what you want is more power and punch from your drum part. It's called the New York compression technique and it involves two separate processes. Firstly, a parallel compression process where we're really hitting a signal hard, low threshold, high ratio, and then um, carefully chosen attack and release times to kind of contour the response to um, the material that you're sending into the compressor in the first place. And then we've got makeup gain there to set an overall output level. And then what we've done is to bring in a little gentle channel EQ, which is just lifting the bottom and the top. And then of course, the advantage of this being on its own channel. The great thing about that is that I've then got a level control, which is allowing me to pull up the volume to the point where I want it within the mix. And remember that level could be automated. So if later on in the track things take off a bit, and I suddenly get a lead synth or I want something that's really gonna pick up, I could of course automate that New York compression uh, volume so that effectively it's dynamically responding to my track. <laughs>